Hi readers, I'm Annie. Let's talk about everything I read in October and honestly this is actually relatively short today because I ended up in a little bit of a reading slump about midway through the month and I DNF'd quite a few books which I will be talking about because some of the DNFs are just it wasn't quite the right time for the book and then some of them are I am fully never gonna touch this again please don't ever make me read this I do not want to go anywhere near it. I felt like I really struggled to get into a book this month. There's a couple of books that I haven't actually written down on here where I read like the first three four pages on my kindle or the physical book and i just wasn't really vibing with it so i was like i'm just gonna put it down we're gonna try something else and i do have a vlog coming out soon about this did a little sort of like weekend come chill with me where we kind of went over everything and like tried to get back into reading and that was so so helpful and as you can see from the stack here we did have to start the empyrean reread way earlier than i planned i had planned to do it in december originally the mood reading was just like not working for me and i couldn't really get to anything so I was like right we're gonna go back to a tried and true and let me tell you it worked so well so let's start on a positive note before we get into all of the dnfs this month so we've got savor it by tara dewitt I really really enjoyed this it's very like small town I mean I don't come from a small town I don't live in a small town I've never really experienced this kind of stuff myself but it's like what you would think is very stereotypical small town like everyone knows everyone everyone's in everyone's business like you can't do anything quietly you can't do anything without someone knowing what's going on they've got this like town competition thing coming up and our main girly sage has like never won it and she's just like that's like her big goal and she just like really wants to win and it's this whole thing of like there's the ex nearby who's chief of police or something like that he's part of the emergency services in some description or he's like captain or i don't know we don't really like him in the grand scheme of things he's not that bad it's again one of these things of like he's then got a new girlfriend so then everyone's like oh like are you okay Okay, and she's like oh my god like I'm fine just like stop getting in my business and then obviously we've got Fisher who comes along and he's trying to like set up this restaurant and he is a chef and he brings his niece and I can't remember her name but she's really fun I actually quite enjoy her as a character because she like kind of comes in when it's like necessary and she's like rebellious but she also is like a heart of gold and it's like okay like I kind of get it I think she's like a teenager I think she's like 13 to 15 somewhere around that sort of age right she's like capable of like doing stuff on her own she doesn't need like a parent hovering around her at all times the last few books that i've read that have had like kids kids in them like have really not hit for me so i really quite liked her as a character just like all the little bits like it was just like it's a book full of little pieces of a puzzle and it's like the little moments that they have and like these little interactions and like the implication and like how all these little things build up into this big thing that becomes their relationship and that's what I really really love and also because with Fisher being a chef he's kind of a disgraced chef he's come out to kind of like rebuild his reputation rebuild his confidence in the kitchen that kind of thing and like I really really love it because it's not just like oh yeah he's a chef and he does chef things like there's so many like foodie bits in here and I was like thank you so much for giving this to me because there's times where he's like testing out different recipes and he's like trying to work things out and Sage has got like a greenhouse and she like grows like different vegetables and fruits and things and he like takes some bits from her and makes recipes out of it and tries to like recreate it with store-bought stuff because that's obviously easier for a restaurant he's like it's just not the same and she's like oh it's a slightly different fruit actually like it's just slightly different and so like then they're kind of educating each other and like there's so many foodie bits in this that this was just like perfect and it's not particularly autumn or fall coded I feel like it's a little bit more summery the cover kind of disagrees on the summer vibe but I think it's a little bit more summery than autumn it's just like cozy and cute and like you could totally curl up with a hot chocolate and a blanket with this at the same time as you could totally take this to the beach and read it and have a really amazing experience regardless let's talk about the DNFs really quickly I'm gonna spin through most of them because they're yeah we didn't finish them so it's not really a huge amount to talk to but Haunting Adeline by H.D. Carlton this is technically the second time that I have tried to read this and I did a whole reading vlog on it if you want to see that go check out the link below I did quit at 35% because my mental health is more important than a book and I do kind of talk a little bit about mental health stuff in that video there is a lot of triggers with this book there is a lot of things that are just like for want of a better word kind of messed up about this book and I don't feel like that's necessarily a secret it's a stalker romance but he's 
like it just even like trying to recall the story like i just can't mentally work out why people like him as a character and that could be just me and if you like this book amazing great for you this is the second time i tried to read it i think last time i got to about 40 odd percent this time i only got to 35 and i just can't do it and i'm putting it down it is gonna be one of those mysteries in my life that i don't think i will ever work out this book or why people like it it's just gonna forever stay a mystery and you know what i have come to accept that you have no idea how many times in all of these kind of videos that I forget about my tea so I refuse to forget about it today because it's far too cold to be without cups of tea so the next DNF we have surprisingly is a Rick Riordan book and okay let me justify this before anyone gets mad at me super quickly this is a soft DNF it's nothing to do with the book it's literally because this was what I was reading when I was in that reading slump and it's cute it's a fun time like it's so autumn coded like it this is Halloween like they're over Halloween weekend they're looking after Hecate's pets and then they they get loose and they're trying to like find them around New York City and this that, and the other and I got to page what was it page 126 so I'm like kind of a third through roughly give or take I can't I don't really know so Percy is pet sitting because he needs recommendation letters to get into university now he, he obviously takes Annabeth and Grover with him because you know what would we be without our main three there was just something about this that like I think it was more because I was in a reading slump that I was like it's just not the vibe it's just not for right now I fully intend to finish it I'm leaving my full regular bookmark in here and I will be finishing it before the end of the year because I do really love this story I love our main three like it's really cute fun cozy times like it's the typical chaos and mayhem that you would expect from Percy, Annabeth and Grover. It's a whole book about chaos. Because I've been slowly working my way through a Rick Riordan and reread this year, like you really see like how they've grown up and how the sarcasm just like hits a little bit better now that they're like 16, 17. The sarcasm has grown over the years and I really, really love it. It's just, it was just not quite the right time for this book. So I will be coming back to this. Then we've got A Kingdom of Bitter Magic by Alea Wells. I DNF this at 19%. I really did not get particularly far through this. And honestly, it just, it felt like there was maybe a a prequel that I missed and I did check for a prequel and I couldn't see one so unless I'm just like looking at the wrong thing but it felt like I just spilled my tea all over me but it felt like we started maybe like 30% into the story. Like it felt like I was meant to kind of already know what was going on in the world. It felt like I was already meant to have read something that kind of went through a lot of the world building that kind of introduced the characters. Like I felt like I was just kind of thrown in and I didn't really have much of an idea as to what was going on. Honestly, I can't even really remember the names of our main characters, but there was just something about their dynamic that was just kind of off. Like they're obviously like fated mates and it's got this like kind of insta lovey insta lusty kind of vibe to it but at the same time it doesn't it's trying to be enemies to lovers with insta lust but it just doesn't really quite work and i don't really quite know what it is it felt kind of off and i think that on top of already feeling like i was meant to kind of know who people were meant to kind of know what was going on in this world it just really didn't have me engaged and i felt like really separate to the story and so i just i just was not vibing with it so then I read Blood Oath by Morgan B. Lee and I actually rated this one four stars. I did really enjoy this book one. It's in this kind of like academic setting but we've got this fated mates but it's like a poly situation like multiple guys to this one girl but like not every group is set up in the same way so you've got essentially like at least one person from every school of magic so you've got like a shifter fey an elemental and then like a like a demon i think i think the guy in the group is an incubus so he's kind of like demony shadowy and like it was great and I actually really liked the dynamics with everyone and it was it was pretty cool and our main girl is like this like secret undercover assassin so I was like okay like sure fine let's let's roll with it let's roll with it and she like kind of tries to come off as this like you know needs protecting but she's like I don't want your protection but like I'm just gonna like keep my head down stay in the shadows like be unnoticed like I'm just gonna like keep my head down stay in the shadows be unnoticed no one's gonna like look at me no one's gonna think twice about me but like I need to do my assassin stuff so I need to have this like kind of demure outset so that everyone just goes oh it's just her like whatever and like no one questions twice really understood that side of her character and then like as you start to see like a little bit more of like the assassin stuff come out she kind of like starts to be like okay like I've actually got stuff to do and actually I'm I like I know how to fight and I know how to look after myself 
myself and know how to take care of myself, I was like, yes, you are quite fun. It felt somewhat similar in some of the mannerisms to like other characters that we've read along sort of similar lines, but at the same time, it wasn't like, oh, this is just a carbon copy of someone else's character. Like she still felt very unique to herself, which I did really like. And I liked the dynamic with all of them because the guys have like had this like childhood rivalry that they've kind of grown up with. They've all grown up in like families that are like very interconnected because they're all super powerful, of course. They all kind of like grew up knowing each other and then they've had this like rivalry and then they kind of turn this rivalry into a little bit of a game to kind of like warm her up to them. And they're like, oh, like the first person that she like gets with wins something from all the other people. So like wins access to like the family archives with one of them or just like things like that. And it's like, you kind of get it because it's like, okay, that's like a very guy's guy thing. But at the same time, <laughs> as a girl's girl, I'm like, ew, no, this is awful. But it kind of worked with the story and it was it was kind of the main source of conflict, I won't lie to you. I know that's kind of a spoiler, but like, it was the main source of conflict. You can see it coming from a mile out. As soon as that you see this animosity, you're like, that's gonna be this main source of conflict. And as soon as you hear about this bet, you're like, yep, yeah, no, there we go. She's gonna find out some way or another. And of course she does. And I didn't even hate it particularly. So I rated that one four stars and I was like, yeah, I'm just gonna like keep going with the series. It's a nice little trilogy. Like, yeah, I can roll with this. And and then book two came and I was like, what is going on? Like, what is this? I mean, I got to 38%, so I gave it like a really good read. But book two, like I literally felt like I had a Miranda Priestly moment where I was like, move at a glacial pace, you know how that thrills me. Even though they kind of like start to figure out her secret and figure out like who she is. And then they're like, oh, we're just gonna make ourselves like really indispensable to her. And we're just gonna like be these cinnamon rolls, which is kind of what I liked about them in book one. It just didn't really work. And I don't really quite know what changed between book one and book two, apart from it just like really wasn't going anywhere. Like the school was like kind of on lockdown. So then that was kind of like her main source of conflict to be able to like complete her mission or whatever. The guys just like we're just gonna stick to you like glue and then she's like well this is inconvenient and it's like okay but like is this it i feel like i needed more from it and i wasn't really getting that so it just it really fell flat the second book which i was kind of sad about because i did really enjoy book one and then that kind of like re-put me back into this reading slump then i read a court of the vampire queen by katie robert which is technically a set of three that has been bound into one book and it was only like 300 odd pages on my kindle so it's not like each of the individual ones is particularly big and I read essentially the first book in it and I was like yeah okay like this is all right like I could I could I could roll with this like I would probably would have rated it like maybe like a three star you know if it was like as an individual because I was like okay like yeah fine like you've got this one girl three guys they're all like vampires the head bloodline they kind of rule the roost right there's like a couple of bloodlines and they're like the most powerful in their bloodline then you've got like turn vampires the whole like point of like the first bit is one of them is in this house that's then like warded he can't leave so then they're trying to break the wards but then it's like it's a spicy book like if you just want something that's just gonna like scratch that itch like it's a good book the problem i had was the first two guys i don't even remember their names apart from the one i didn't like i don't remember the names of the two that i liked but i remember the name of the one i didn't like but the first two like one of them was like full cinnamon roll second one was like looks like would kill you is a cinnamon roll and the last guy was just like would kill you right He's just like not here for it. He doesn't want anything to do with it. He's like, I'm literally only touching you in any kind of description because my buddy kind of needs to do this with you to like break the ward around his house so that he can get out of Dodge. So he's like, I'm only doing this as a, like essentially like a business transaction. And he has like zero interest in her. He makes her feel really bad about herself. He's like not even, it's not even like rude where it's like, you're kind of rude, but like, okay. It's just like straight rude. And I'm like, um, pack in that attitude. Not really here for it. It's, I think it's almost amplified because you've got two cinnamon rolls as well. And I'm like, it just kind of amplifies the fact that he's got a bad attitude. And I'm like, I don't care for your attitude, sir. You can take it out the door and leave forever. I don't want it. So when I started reading like the second book, I was like, no, I'm done. I can't do this. Like his bad attitude, just like thrown in your face in that second segment, that second part. Rylan is a hard no for me. The first sentence I wrote in my bullet journal is what is wrong with the books this month? And then I said, Rylan the Ice King, I don't know, something about him kills it for everyone. I can't focus on the others as his toxicity is just so overwhelming. And I feel like that just describes everything that I need it to. And yeah, I didn't 
left this at 36%. I read part one, enjoyed part one. Part two came and I was like, nah, I, I'm done. So let's go back to the start of the month where I actually was having like a really good reading moment. And one of those books was House of Fruits and Ruin by Erin A. Craig. And I feel like I'm such an Erin A. Craig stan. Like I feel like there's nothing that she's gonna ever write that I'm gonna like dislike, truly. This was another masterpiece from Erin. Like I'm obsessed with this. This was 100% five star. This is the book of the month for me. Like it's so good. Like this floppy paperback, I don't know what it is. All her books are like gloriously floppy and it's just so so perfect and this carries on from house of salt and sorrows so it's kind of second in a series but it's been a number of years because book one house of salt and sorrows we follow anna lee who is one of the sisters and in this book we follow verity in book one i think verity was like six and now she's 18 so it's been quite a number of years like while she's been growing up and we're finally getting verity's story and essentially she like even from like the first few pages you're like this whole thing is just like a little bit creepy and it's not like uncomfortable creepy I don't think for a lot of there's like a few little bits that you sit there and you go oh my god like I just need to pause and like recenter myself in this reality because this has just gotten a little bit intense but like even from the first few pages I'm not gonna spoil it because it is just too good okay and you really have to experience this 100% recommend you start reading it and then you're like I feel like I like there's nothing to tell you not to trust it but you sit there and you go I feel like I shouldn't trust this. I feel like something is just a little bit off. It just doesn't feel quite right. It's like when you get like that tingle down the back of your neck when you're walking through like a really spooky kind of area in the middle of the night and you're like, something's just not quite right. That's this book. That is the experience of reading this book. And honestly, it's kind of the experience of reading pretty much anything Erin writes. And I love it. And I think it's about the only thing that's like thriller, horror-esque that I read because I'm just like, this is so good and there's something about the way she writes that's like so addictive you can't put it down but at the same time you're like oh my god I just need a minute to like remember that I am not in this world because it's so immersive that you're like wait no I'm okay I am okay I am in my room everything is fine and I really don't want to spoil this book but like I could not recommend this enough like it's so good Verity ends up going off to Bloem which is feels very like spring-esque it feels like there's they're very much into like flowers and like trees and plants and growing things and beauty and making things pretty and the specific goddess that they worship is all about like beauty and prettiness and flowers and like it feels very aphrodite okay if you know greek mythology like it feels very aphrodite but like i just the whole time you sit there and you're like something just feels off and then there's a big reveal before she leaves for Bloem, and you sit there and you're like I don't even trust my main character now. Like you're reading her perspective and it's first person, so you're really immersed into it. And yet you don't trust her. You you don't, you don't trust Verity from so early on and you don't trust a single thing that's being said, but at the same time, you have to trust it because you've got no other basis to, to base your opinion on. So it's this really weird kind of, do I trust you, don't I trust you? Do I trust everything you're, you're sort of seeing and experiencing or do I not and you have to kind of like pick around it and it's so fun to read because of that it's really difficult to describe I don't really quite know how to describe it but it's just so good it was another masterpiece from Erin it's a five stars it's my book of the month like I I'm obsessed with this and I can't wait for anything else that she publishes I know I am currently behind on actually stuff that she's published so I do need to get hold of her latest book like ASAP if I recommend anything it's this book like make it this book it's so good so good then i read quicksilver by callie hart this is another one that has been going around the internet recently i'm not really back onto bookstagram or booktok or anything but like i've heard a number of people here on booktube talking about it and i was like okay like are we just hyping or like do we have a good reason so i was like okay like I will read it and like normally I tend to be the kind of person that I'm like I will let the hype die down and then I'll read stuff but this time I'm like no I, f I have a good feeling about this let me tell you I was not wrong this was so good and like this is a hundred percent my brand of romanticy like through and through because a little bit like fourth wing which we'll talk about in a minute it is like equal parts romance and fantasy it's so well done that it's like your very typical like human taken to the fey world you know but it's like weirdly super powerful and like weirdly you know like 
fits in with all these kind of people and you sit there and go oh my gosh like how could that possibly happen but at the same time it's not eye rolly like it just works it's a little bit like actor you'd say the premise of it and people are like oh it's one of those kind of books and then you start reading you're like but it works though like it just does and i can get why some people aren't really on board with it well no i can't that's a total lie i can't see why people aren't on board with this because i'm obsessed with it i am like so sad that we don't have a book two coming anytime soon i don't think it's been announced but i think when you look at the goodreads page it says like bloody blah, blah part one or like number one or whatever so like i know there's gonna be more but like i need there to be more like i just need it and the descriptions are really good like i really really enjoyed that like it wasn't like full oh my god like i'm totally transported into this world and like i kind of forget that my own reality exists but it's like 90 percent there like you feel really unfortunate it's almost like you're reading someone's diary rather than like sitting on their shoulder so you're still like really really immersed in it and i really love it and like the battle scenes are super well done you can like see the choreography happening as you're reading it rather than it's just oh yeah it was just like a bunch of people fighting like you really like feel each of the each of the swings with the the sword or whatever you get what i mean if you've read a book that like has that kind of description like you know what i mean like you feel you just like feel it right <laughs> I feel that's a very subjective line, but you know what I'm saying. And again, this is another one that I kind of don't really want to spoil. I feel like there's a lot of people that kind of have been giving spoilers and I don't really want to be one of them because I really hate spoilers. There's so many intricate parts of the world building and you don't find them out all at the very beginning, which again, is something I really, really like and I that's not a secret, right? But just finding out certain bits like later on when it's like you're in this like super intense moment and then it's like, it stays super intense, but then you find out this bit of world building and it's just it's not like a lord dump it's like you find it out at the same time as the main character is finding this out and it's just like so perfectly integrated with the world building and the story like together because they are kind of the same thing and it's like beautifully done and i really really love it and i'm like i need more of this right now where is the second book someone please give it to me because i might self combust if i don't get it soon then we've got daydream by hannah grace this was the book that like actually got me out the reading club and this is the book that i was reading in that vlog that i'm telling you guys about so like do go check out that vlog when it comes out subscribe and ring the notification bell down below so you know when that releases spoiler it will be on a sunday at 11 30 british time because that is just when i said everything to post okay if you didn't know you do now i don't know i was a little bit nervous to pick this up because i really thought i was in like a fantasy mood but then as we've seen through the amount of dnfs i've had this month and the way that they've all been like fantasy romanticy type things i was like okay fine maybe i do just need to like switch it up which is honestly like the best piece of advice i can give you if you are in a book slump as well is like just switch it up a little bit like i knew i needed a romance story because when do i not need a romance story something about the fantasy aspect was just like not really working even though i was convinced that was the mood i was in so i was like no we'll just pick this up because i was convinced one of my friends had read it which actually she hasn't read it so i'm like you need to read this because i thought i could talk to you about this and now i can't so i'm like desperately waiting for her to finish so i could talk to her about it this saved me from my reading slump honestly I I absolutely love Hallie and Henry. They are like my favorite. Like Henry was my favorite in book one and you didn't even really get to see him that much and we've got an author's note at the beginning i know there's like a whole load of people that have been talking about this but you've got an author's note at the beginning where basically hannah says that like henry is the character that she's put most of herself into and he's definitely neurospicy um which we love there's like so many aspects of like the pair of them that are like slightly that way like i don't know i could just i just sat there and i was like why does that sound like me like and i love that i love that it did and i just like really felt so connected to these characters and i really couldn't put it down and i was absolutely obsessed with this i, I don't even know what else to say apart from this was just like so good i know the book one icebreaker was like very much a hockey romance and then our main girl stas she was an ice skater and that was like their kind of whole thing and then book two i didn't particularly enjoy as much because it was set in the summer camp and we do see rory and russ in this and they do reference the summer camp a little bit so like yeah okay i'm like okay it makes sense and it all like kind of adds up because obviously this is the third in the series and even though this didn't really have that much hockey in it it was more about them 
as a pair and actually it had a little bit more of like their schoolwork kind of stuff in it like because their their kind of main connection is the fact that he needs help with one of his classes and she's like oh i will happily help because she's a people pleaser hello very annie they just they really go together so well and they complement each other so beautifully and i think that was like more the focus of this book rather than the fact that like he's the captain of the hockey team and like they're going to like hockey games and stuff because she has a bad experience with an ex who was also a hockey player so that kind of then feeds into a little bit of certain things and i think the biggest thing that i loved about this and it's a tiny bit of a spoiler so if you don't want to spoil it do just like skip forward a little minute but the fact that they take time separately to work out what is like messy about their lives and they're like i just need some time to deal with my mess so that you don't have to deal with my mess and it's so beautifully done and the communication is frankly immaculate in this there's not an ounce of miscommunication they communicate so well like there's so many points where they're like in the middle of doing stuff and they're like wait can we just like pause and just like have a conversation about this like i just need to fully understand what you're saying because like the way that you're saying it isn't quite working for me and i just want to make sure that i'm like 100 percent understanding you and it's so it's so good it's so good i love it i love them i love this book this saved me from a reading slump so thank you very much hannah grays for giving me back maple hills and not giving me back that summer camp because honestly i don't care about the summer camp we can just leave it where it is in book two and then last but certainly not least i did sort of start my empyrean reread before the january release i wanted to do this in december but we ended up doing it now because of the reason and even though i'd read daydream i was like i want to make sure i am fully out of this reading slump so i was like we'll go back to a tried and true we will go back to a well-tested book obviously i read my annotated copy i do have the special edition on my shelf that has the extra chapters for zayden and i ended up putting a note in here on the right chapter just be like read special edition page bloody 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 blah blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so that i don't miss out on those bits what can i say about this i did a whole reading vlog on it the first time i read it i you know i was late to the party once i did an iron flame reading vlog as well you know i cry at this i laugh at this i live for it i breathe for it i die for it that's not gonna change it's a five stars i get why some people don't necessarily like it it is absolutely perfect for me. I love it. I'm obsessed. Like I cannot wait for the next one to come out. And it's just, I have a feeling about some of the things that are going to be coming in the next one. And the only reason I'm not saying it is because I really, like, I have been keeping so far away from like fan theories and, and everything that everyone is talking about of like, why is it called Onyx Storm? What is this thing going to be like? What's going to happen here? And I'm like, I'm keeping so far away from that. that I'm not even going to like start talking about it here. I have a few theories. I'm keeping them to myself because I really want to go into the next book and then whatever ones we have afterwards. I think it's planned for a series of five. So I want to go into the next three like as blind as possible in terms of like outside influence on what could happen. I'm really glad Ghost is snoring into the camera right now. I really hope you're all enjoying that too. But I am so excited to continue this series. So yeah, I started my reread a little bit early but it's not the end of the world in the grand scheme of things okay thank you guys so this is everything i read in october as well as everything i did not read in october it literally was a month i feel like of two halves because we had some amazing reads none of these were below a four star and then i just had a load of dnfs i don't really quite know what was going on i feel a lot better about my reading now in november so that is going really well at the moment and i hope it stays that way because the reading goal this year is like so much larger than last year and i'm quite confident that i will hit my reading goal considering i've already extended it once but at the same time like i don't have time <laughs> for all these dnfs like i was really worried in the middle of october that i was not gonna hit my reading goal so I was like, why am I DNFing so many books? What is going on? Everything is just like not really hitting. And I think we fixed it. <laughs> But let me know have you guys been in a reading slump at all have you had one previously and what kind of books seem to always get you out of your reading slump pop it in the comments down below don't forget to like subscribe ring the notification bell so you know when the next video comes out but like i said it is always on a sunday but i will see you guys next time i hope you have a fabulous reading day bye mm -hmm.